we talk about all these strategies and things to do to execute, but above all of it is attitude. There are so many people that end up getting stuck in that victim mentality. That's, in my opinion, the, the worst disease of all. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's coming from that side too. It's totally catch 22 because it's like you get the principle you want to do it. Like when you're that sick too, you know, like when thing, when life is going great, there's, it's always the same. It's like, it, it's easy when everything's going well and it's good, then yeah, of course you have a great attitude, but it's really like when, when things get hard, when they're not going your way, you know, what's your attitude then that kind of shows your, your foundation. Well, and a lot of times, Josh, it's really about, we have to remyelinate the brain, right? So yeah, it takes time and it takes constant redirection when those thoughts come up. And we talked a little bit about this before the recording, but just even just about the, the water, the body of water that we are, you know, the, the body of water that we are and how our thoughts and our language actually change the structure of water in our body and how intimately that is connected to our overall health. So that really becomes, when you understand that, that becomes a non-negotiable. We have to be believing that our body can heal. We have to be speaking life into our body. We need to be constantly reminding our body that it has the capacity to heal, thanking it for symptoms that are coming up and, and letting you know that there's something that's out of homeostasis, that there's something that needs to be rebalanced. And yeah, that can be really hard, but again, it's, it's consistency doing that over and over again. And I know that, you know, that a little bit about my story, I don't share a ton about this with my audience, but I mean, I struggled with chronic illness for 20 years of my life. And it's only been within the last four or three. And I feel every day that I, I make more and more gains in the right direction, but it was recognizing how toxic my mindset was for so many of those years complaining about why I do all these things that are, you know, health promoting. I try so hard and I'm still, I still don't feel better. Like you start to notice these patterns, these conversations that you have with yourself and how destructive that is to your body's ability to heal. And I've done, this probably sounds super nerdy to a lot of people, but I've really changed uh, my, my, my interest in water has just been, I mean, I'm so fascinated by water and understanding uh, water and how it holds coherence and memories and how m much ability we have to transform the water, the water in our body by, you know, drinking intentional water and, you know, doing things like sauna and near infrared light and um, exercising um, that's, you know, going to generate electrons. It's going to help to structure water and being in a bath, Epsom salt bath. So I've really started to implement a lot of these things that are directly related to supporting the water in my body. But one of the things that I've started doing is I structure my water and will intentionally put, you know, structure it with prayer and gratitude. And then I put these sticky notes on the water, health, you know, healing, whatever it is, whatever word I feel I need in, um, in that day, I will stick it to the bottle, the water bottle. And just that as crazy as this probably sounds has totally changed like my whole mentality throughout the course of the day. Cause I feel like I'm so focused on gratitude and saying, thank you. And there, when, when you do that, I've just noticed that there's so little room for negativity to even there's no space for it anymore. It's like in every situation, just really am focusing on gratitude. What can I be thankful for in this moment? And so even for those people that are feeling so unwell, like to really look at, and actually, Josh, this is, um, I've done a little bit of work with Dr. John Martini, who is uh, amazing. And he teaches all about equilibrium, like in every situation, even when we feel like we're being challenged, we're simultaneously being supported. And so it's our job to look for the, all those ways that we're being supported when we're perceiving that we're in a challenge. And that work has like single-handedly transformed 
my mental state. Because then anytime anything comes up, instead of having an emotional response to this being bad or getting elated when something is, you know, someone is praising you or, um, you know, complimenting you and, and we can kind of get elated in those moments, it's really maintaining equilibrium and remembering that these, none of these are good or bad. They just are. And there is that sense of equilibrium in every moment, in everything that we go through. And so that, that's been really helpful for me too, to actually, you know, write those things down. And it, it's just been repetition, doing it over and over and over again. And then eventually you get to a place where you say, and I said this to my best friend the other day, that I feel like my I've, I'm a completely different person than I was five, five years ago. And so that's just another example of these things take time. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. Things aren't going to change over, uh, transform overnight. And same thing with the the lipid replacement therapy. You know, people will take the body bio PC for a week and say, I don't feel anything. (laughs) It's like, well, we have 70 trillion cells, 200 different cell types, 500 or more trillion mitochondria to repair. You know, it takes time. It takes time to heal. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that alone, like you mentioned earlier, it's like nine to 12 month time frame. like that alone can make a huge difference because we are operating on such a shorter timeline, just in general day to day, like everything's instant now. Again, a lot of like the marketing and, and things and some faster interventions are sold to be that way. So that definitely sets people up for this cycle just over and over. Try the next thing. Okay. One month or one week. Okay. Try the next thing. You know, um, and I don't know why we do it. Well, I was just about to say, I don't know why we do it with our health. Like with physical health, you wouldn't expect to go to the gym and have like yeah. huge results in a month, but actually people do. And, and I've made the mistake too. So <laughs> I think we do it with a lot of things, but yeah, just having that a more accurate idea of the timeline can lead to a lot better decisions. Um, but the stuff you were saying about, uh, like what you learned in your work with Dr. Martini, that that's, it reminds me of some Buddhist principles or like the Tao Te Ching that talks about the middle path, you know, which is the same idea. Like you're constantly coming back to the middle and it's on these, these ends of the polarity that things are so extreme. And the more you can, can be in the middle, like yep. the, that's just as true as one of the extreme polarities. And it's a much more, you know, still calm and probably productive place to be. Yeah, otherwise you feel like you're living on a roller or you're on a roller coaster, right? Because I mean, I remember thriving off of affirmations when anybody would tell me that I did a great job. It's like, oh, I feel so amazing. And then you get, you know, something critical said about you or, and then it's this like high goes to this severe low and you just like are on this roller coaster all day long. And yeah, his principles have really impacted me in, in many ways in business, in my personal life. If anyone has not heard of John Demartini. I, the breakthrough experience is transformative for sure. Yeah, and, I, and did the um, did the gratitude come from him as well? Because I liked what you said. It's really the antidote to what I was talking about earlier, like these these negative negative attitude or defeating thoughts, limiting thoughts. Let's call them limiting beliefs, because the way you said it, it's basically like you just fill up with the good. You just fill your life and your thoughts with the good. And then you don't have to worry about how do I stop all these other thoughts? There's just not room for them or there's less and less room for them. And I like doing things like that with practical things too, like diet. You know, it's such a, there's so many opinions and so much information you can get out there. But I'm like, the more you can just focus on what you know is good, what you know is good for you, then there's just not room for like the junk food. It's not like I have to fight every junk food or processed food. It's like you can totally fill up a plate or a meal or a week's worth of food with good stuff. So focusing on that, it's just a faster path to to where you want to be. And it's a frequency, right? I mean, this is also where my fascination with with water has come in because those those thoughts have different frequencies. And so it's really about what what kind of frequency do you want to be on? And those negative actually I can't remember the researcher's name he was out of Russia. And he studied water and he exposed water to electromagnetic frequencies and toxins and all kinds of things. And he found that human emotion had the biggest impact 
on water. And so you think about that from a negativity standpoint. And if you're walking around saying, you know, oh, I don't feel well and oh, this hurts and I have brain fog and I'm not sleeping well and I don't have any energy. Like if those, if that's your language, like think about the frequency (laughs) that that is generating in your body and how that's impacting the water. Again, I think that a lot of people maybe don't understand. I mean, that the water that is in your body making up 90, you know, 99% of molecular weight is all of your cell, all of your organelles, your cells, the proteins. I mean, they're all impacted by the structure of that water. And there's researchers that actually uh, think that it's really the degradation of the water within our body that leads to disease. And so if we can maintain, when you look at water, as the future of medicine, like if we can maintain that highly structured water within our body, then, you know, that's going to equate to, to health. And so that's also where I just feel so encouraged about the, the ability that we have to just change the way that we think about our health and think about our life and how that impacts the water in our body and ultimately impacts our health. 